This is a Red FM Vancouver podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe for more great content. For further info, log on to redfm.ca. ਕਿਮ ਬੋਲਨ ਲੰਬੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਤੋਂ ਵੈਂਕੂਰ ਸਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਪੱਤਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਰਿਪੋਰਟਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬੜੀਆਂ ਬਾਲਾਂ ਵਗਦੀਆਂ ਵੇਖੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਖੁਦ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੇ ਕਈ ਥ੍ਰੈਟਸ ਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਕਈ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਧਮਕੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਹੰਡਾਈਆਂ ਹਨ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਹੰਡੇ ਵਰਤੇ ਤੇ ਤਜਰਬੇਕਾਰ ਰਿਪੋਰਟਰ ਹਨ ਮੇਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਨੇ ਕਿਮ ਬੋਲਨ ਹਾਈ ਕਿਮ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਫॉर ਜੁਆਇਨਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਟੁਡੇ ਮਾਈ ਪਲੇਜਰ So what do you think is happening in Jamie Bacon's case because victims are feeling that the victim families are feeling that uh, this deal is not a fair deal Well yes some of them have expressed that they're not happy that he reached a plea bargain he is has pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder in the Surrey 6 case that terrible slaughter in Surrey on October 19th 2007 and he has also pleaded guilty to counseling someone to kill another person and that was uh, just over a year later so it, you know it's um he he will likely get um a sentence of about 18 years but it'll be minus a lot of credit because he's been in jail for several years so he's expected to get a net sentence of uh, about five and a half years hmm. and he could be out on statutory release in four years or less so I can understand why the families aren't feeling great about it. Um, the prosecution uh, services said that they did this deal because there were a lot of problems with the case. There was some police misconduct. We've heard a lot about it. Uh, you know, officers uh, partying with a potential witness and one of them having a relationship with her. So uh, because of the problems with the case, they've decided this is the best solution to get some justice. These kind of deals are made with the knowledge of the judge? No, they're brought to the judge after their reach between lawyers and, and for the defense and the prosecution services. Then they take them to the judge, right? So the judge has to be presented with a series of facts uh that support why the deal has been made. So a judge could reject that. In this case, the judge accepted it. Also por- important to point out that the BC Supreme Court st- judge Kathleen Kerr is the same judge that after a secret hearing back in December of 2017 stayed the charges against Jamie Bacon and Surrey 6. So she felt there were sufficient problems with the case that she uh heard about in a secret hearing that she dropped those charges and then they were reinstated by the Court of Appeal. So, you know, you can see that the prosecution is thinking, well, there are problems with this case. Uh yes, he was charged with first degree murder, but perhaps this is the best solution at this point in time. Mhm. So what do you think about these kind of deals? You've been reporting crime since a long time. Yeah, I understand them. Um, you know, I think unfortunately when we have so many problems with getting these major prosecutions through the court system, like they take years. there's you know millions of pages of disclosure of no, no that's fine but this is a major hindrance in delivering justice yes it is it is but you know ultimately it, it is asmo almost like a blood money i i don't understand that concept this fellow has been in jail for 11 years over 11 years at this point in time uh so you know this is the deal that has been reached he is admitting responsibility Um I also one of the things that was pointed out uh by um the crown uh at the sentencing hearing is that you know Bacon was not at uh the Belmoral Tower when the murders happened he sent other people to do the murders so mm-hmm. you know that again makes it harder to you know portray him as one of the killers However, you know, they did have a shot at the case and this is the decision that was made. So, you know, as a reporter, it's not really my position to comment on it. I do understand the frustration of the families. Mhm. So, um these kind of deals when they're made, you said the judges are not totally aware of it or the judges are made aware and then they kind of agree to it. Well, what what I said is that uh negotiations are entered into between the defense and the crown prosecutors and uh if they reach a plea deal 
they then take that to the judge. That happened in early July here. The families weren't told about it in advance, which I think was probably a bit of an issue. I was, happened to be in the courtroom. I was the only one there, and it was a phone hearing. Everyone was calling in, um, and... Uh, the you know i was shocked because i thought you know this they're going to fix a trial date we're going to get on with this and finally there's going to be a trial in uh, surrey 6 for jamie bacon you know two of his co-accused were convicted way back in 2014 and it was a strong case against them and some of the evidence against jamie bacon came out in that earlier trial so you know there was good evidence against him including that police were following him around on the day of the murders and saw him meeting with uh, the people who went on to do the actual shooting. So, you know, I thought it was a good case, uh, but, you know, this is the decision that was reached. Mm -hmm. The judge signed off on it after she was presented with an agreed statement of facts. Um, And I'm sure she'll have strong words for Mr. Bacon when she hands down her decision Friday on how much time he will serve. Kim, you've been uh, covering these gangs since a long time. How has the scene changed since Bindi Johal? Because, uh, you know, South Asian community had its own fair share of gangsters. Yes, uh, it's changed a lot. You know, unfortunately, I think you're seeing younger and younger, you know, kids getting involved. Uh, There just seems to be this... um, I don't know, mindset here in B.C. that this is an easy way to make money. But, you know, I'm telling you, as an old reporter now, uh, I have seen so many murders and so many murders of young people, like, you know, 17, 18-year-old kids. And those murder files sit there, and, you know, years and years later, no one's charged. So it is not an easy way to make money, and it's been devastating for so many families uh, across the Lower Mainland, and, uh, you know, I wish it would stop, but I don't see it changing any time. The, the modus operandi in the times of Bindi Johal are still the same? Uh, no, I would I would say that uh, gangs now are much more sophisticated um, than they were back then. There's a lot more people involved. There are, in some cases, international players that are pulling the strings of the local gangs. Uh, you know, we know that uh, gangs like the United Nations have had direct contact with cartels in Mexico. So, you know, they're more sophisticated players, but the victims are usually the youngest people involved. And they're either going to jail for years and years and years or they're getting killed. Uh, so, you know, not a good outcome for, for young men who decide to choose this path. Uh, I mean, we've, you know, got a number of uh people awaiting trial for murders, and they're like 21, 22 years old. Uh, And if convicted, they're going to be spending the rest of their life in jail. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of bigger players that sort of pull the strings of young guys who agree to go out and do things not knowing, well, not fully understanding how bad it's going to be for them in the end. Kim, so many men have died, but their bodies, some of the bodies never were recovered. Do you think that's true that uh, there are all kind of talk that their bodies are uh, being put into the acid drums and dissolved right there, then they don't find it? Is there such a thing? Like, that's why we we can't find the dead bodies? I, I really couldn't speculate on that. I mean, I think more likely, uh, you know, people are killed on deserted roads. You know, I mean, this is a big province with a lot of wilderness and, uh, you know, a lot of people agree to go meet someone at some obscure location and end up getting killed at that location. And then, you know, sometimes the body is found years later. I just remember, um, you know, last summer being over in Euclid covering a double murder there that's linked to the Hells Angels. And, you know, the victims were grabbed at the marina, but their bodies weren't found for some time because they were, you know, dumped on the, you know, end of a, a very, you know, challenging little dirt road to get down, right? So if a woman hadn't been walking her dog, they would never have found those bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, so, uh, you know, it's possible. I mean, you know, it's, it sounds, sounds like something out of a movie. Uh, but I think that, you know, the easiest way in this big province is to leave someone in the woods in a place that no one goes. In closing, what would you suggest that uh, these kind of deals are victimizing the victim families more? And what can be done? Well, in this case, you know, there's, there were a lot of things that came out behind closed doors in secret court hearings. So 
I'm not privy to that information, right? Mm -hmm. Were those things fatal to the case, and therefore this was the best solution? You know, that's kind of what the Crown is suggesting. But I, you know, I wish I knew what that information was. I think that uh, we have too many secret hearings in courts in B.C., and that's a big problem. In this case, you know, we had four police officers that were criminally charged for their behavior during the investigation. You know, that was a big problem. However, the other two people were convicted, and those same police officers were involved in their investigation. So, you know, I think I totally understand the families being disappointed. Yeah. Uh, but I also know that this could have go- gone on for another five years if it had gone to trial and appeal, and maybe he wouldn't have been convicted after it all. So at least at this point in time he's convicted of something is very serious what he's been convicted of conspiracy to commit murder and he's admitting it as you know very few people admit guilt in courts in bc so it is nice hearing someone say yeah i did this this terrible thing that has destroyed so many but for five years i mean that's ridiculous and you know do you think this looks like the inability of the prosecution Yeah, but I mean, he has been in jail already for uh, for 11 years, right? So some people who get convicted of second degree murder are out of jail in 10 years, right? So you have to sort of look at that as well. Uh but yeah, no I I understand why people uh think this is not right. And you know, uh the story I'm writing for Friday's paper is about how he's a suspect in a number of other cases. So mm-hmm. uh you know, those are still open, right? So, you know, he may uh face additional charges at some point in time. Uh but uh he his lawyer did say to the court that he wants to turn his life around. He's lost his brother and he uh you know, as we all know, John Bacon was murdered. Uh his girlfriend died of a drug overdose. So, you know, he's uh saying that he feels uh like, you know, it's not worth it anymore and he wants to live a better life. So, we can only hope uh but this is uh where we're at at this point in time and it's so many years after the actual murders right mm-hmm. um, it's just terrible seeing the families in court uh you know a week or so ago and you know so much pain still it is yeah thank you kim right. i really appreciate your time any time thank you all right bye 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 thank you for listening to another red fm podcast don't forget to hit subscribe and check out our red fm canada youtube channel for further info log on to our red fm social media platforms or visit redfm.ca